Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for variations on induction. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to prove a statement by induction starting somewhere other than n equals 1, and you should be able to prove a statement by induction on the evens or the odds only. Our motivation is that induction has many different variations. We can change the starting value, and we can change how far the steps or jumps are in the induction step. Today we will see two of those variations. In starting at a different base case, let's think about this motivating question. How do, the, how do n squared and 2 to the n compare for various natural numbers n? Here's a table that I would like you to fill out. Fill out the values of n squared and 2 to the n, and then answer the question, is n squared less than or equal to 2 to the n? Please do that now. After completing it, we end up with the following information. So for n equals 1, 2, uh, we have yes, it is. For n equals 3, the answer is no, because 9 is bigger than 8. And for 4, 5, and 6, the answer is yes. And we can see that the 2 to the n is going to start growing much quicker than the n squared. So we think that this is going to hold for all values of n larger than 6. So in this case, because it's not true for n equals 3, we can't use n equals 1 as our base case. Because if we tried to use n equals 1 as our base case, it would imply everything after it, including n equals 3, which wouldn't make sense. So in that case, we should set as our base case the smallest value for which everything else will be true. In this case, it's n equals 4. That will be our starting case, our base case, and then we'll prove everything after that. So here's our theorem. For all natural numbers n greater or equal to 4, we have that n squared is less than or equal to 2 to the n. Let's prove this theorem. We're going to prove it by induction, and pn will be the statement n squared is less than or equal to 2 to the n. The base case we already computed, which was n equals 4. And for the induction step, it goes as usual. With one additional um, assumption, we're going to assume that pn is true for some n, and we're going to assume that n is greater or equal to 4. This is the part that's different from usual induction. Let's see where we're going to use that throughout the proof. So we're trying to prove p of n plus 1. So we need to know something about n plus 1 squared and 2 to the n plus 1. Well, this is what n plus 1 squared is. And now by pn, we know that the first term is going to be less than 2 to the n. But we don't know what's going to happen with 2 to the n plus 1. Well, I'm going to cheat a bit. The first part is going to be the induction hypothesis, and the second part is going to be a lemma that I'm going to ask you to prove. So the lemma is, for all n greater or equal to 4, 2 to the n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 to the n. Um, and I'm going to leave this as an exercise for you. Uh, it's not that hard. And take a moment to think about what proof technique you think will be useful to prove this. If you guessed induction, you're right. You'll prove this lemma by induction. So going back to our statement, we have n squared is less than 2 to the n. And if we accept the lemma, then this linear term is less than 2 to the n. Add these up together, and you get 2 to the n plus 1. So there we have p n plus 1, that this term is less than or equal to this term. Now, where in this proof did we use that n was greater or equal to 4? It's not really obvious where. It turns out that you have to prove the lemma to see where exactly n greater or equal to 4 will matter. Let's extract the proof strategy from this. So this is the proof strategy for proving um, things by induction at other base cases. So let capital N be a natural number. You can think of it as a very large natural number. And if you're trying to prove that for all little n larger than this, p of n is true, you need to prove p of capital N, 
and then you need to prove that if n is greater or equal to capital N, then you have the usual induction thing. This is exactly induction with two modifications. We start at a larger number, and we make this additional assumption that uh, we only care about the natural numbers that are bigger than the thing we're starting at. So in the previous case, we used n equals 4, capital N equals 4 in both of these. Another thing we can modify is how much induction jumps. So here's a proof strategy for induction on the evens. Uh, this is a typo. We don't need this. To prove a statement of the form for all even natural numbers, p of n is true, prove p of 2, and then show that p of n implies p of n plus 2 for all the even natural numbers. In other words, you start at 2, and you show that you can jump up by 2 every time, if you can do that, then you'll have proved it for all even natural numbers. There's a similar version for odds as well, and you should try to write this down, what it is. Let's see an example of using proof by induction on the evens. This theorem says for every even natural number n, this polynomial n times n squared plus 3n plus 2 is divisible by 24. It's a kind of strange statement, um, and it happens to be true. We're going to prove it by induction on the evens. So let p of n be the statement that this term is a multiple of 24. Uh, as a caution, sometimes people uh, are tempted to say that this thing right here is the statement p of n, but this, this thing right here is just an expression. It's like saying 7 or... 7 squared or 7 times n. That's not a statement. You have to assert something about that expression, and we are asserting that this expression is a multiple of 24. That's something that can be true or false. So the base case here is n equals 2, and here you plug in n equals 2 and you get that it actually equals 24, which is clearly divisible by 24. So much like in regular induction, the base case is not so hard. Now let's move on to the induction step. So let little n be an even natural number and assume that p of n is true. Our goal is to find this term somewhere, because that's the term that we will get from p of n. p of n tells us that that term is divisible by 24. So this is the term that we care about now for p of n plus 2. We want to show that this is a multiple of 24. Now, before we continue, I want you to expand this. Take a moment, write it down, expand it out, see what you get, and look for this type of term, an n times n squared plus 3n plus 2. Um, it's very instructive for this example um, because the hard part is finding this. Um, and for some of you, the hard part will be doing the algebra, but hopefully that's not too hard. So take a moment now to expand this. Now that you've had a chance to do that, let's expand it in a way that helps us find the uh, P of N statement. So the first thing I do is I, I open up these brackets. So this is the FOIL rule right here, and then these three terms go right here. Now I'm looking for n times n squared plus 3n plus 2, and it's going to come from this n with this n squared, this 3n, and this 2. So I've underlined them. Now let's group these terms and expand out. This is going to get a little bit messy. I apologize. So when we distribute this n across, we get n on these terms right here. So this is multiplying by n, it's expanding by n. And then when we expand with the 2, we get all of these terms here, and we've clumped them together. Now, expanding this n across again, 
we get uh, three terms. Here, uh, this is n applied to this. When I multiplied n by this middle term, I group, I expanded it out here, and I clumped them together with these terms. So basically, I'm expanding everything uh, except for this term that I was looking for, this recursive term. So this is all expanding out everything except the recursive term. Now let's look at these three terms. Our goal was to prove that this whole expression is divisible by 24. So what do we know? The first term is divisible by 24 by the induction hypothesis. The second term is divisible by 24 because n is even. And this is kind of neat. So n has to have a factor of 2 in it, so n squared has a factor of 4. So the whole thing has a factor of 24. And then the third term is obviously divisible by 24. So all three of those terms are divisible by 24, therefore the sum is. The challenge in this question was in expanding everything in a way that makes sense and in a way that allowed you to use the um, induction hypothesis.